Okay, uh, welcome everyone to the January 13th meeting of the Town Council. Um, could we have the roll call, please? Chairman Adams. Oh, sorry, that's me. <laughs> Here, new name. <laughs> Councillor Devereaux. Here. Councillor Gabrielson. Here. Councillor Garvin. Councillor Caitlin Jordan. Councillor Penelope Jordan. Here. And Councillor Straw. Here. And now we will do the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, um, and I'll just note that our two absent councillors are on the way, but I understand there was some bridge traffic this evening, so we, we delayed a little bit to give them time to get here, but they should be here shortly. Um, okay, moving on, town council reports and correspondence. Do any councillors have any reports or correspondence? Yes, Councillor Jordan. Um, I'd just like to let people know that we're having um, an ordinance committee meeting on Wednesday morning at 7.30 a.m. Uh, and we'll co be continuing work on uh, short-term rentals. And I just wanted to put that message out there because uh, the more people we have engaged in, in kind of solving this uh, complex issue, the better solution I think we'll arrive at. So I hope people can make it. It'll probably be 7.30. 30 to maybe 9.30 or 10 o'clock, so we got a lot to go over. I think this, Councillor Straw. Uh, I just note in the, uh, I think last month, the Census Bureau put out the latest uh, American Community Survey uh, estimates, and for anyone that's interested, uh, if I recall correctly, the under five uh, age gra uh, bracket is according to their guesstimate at the highest level since 1990. So um, again, take it with a grain of salt, but they estimate that the population under five is booming and that the town is uh, approximately a year younger than it was uh, last year, so. Um. Wow. Excellent. Um, anyone else with reports or correspondence? No. Um, I would also second Councillor Jordan's recommendation that people participate in the ordinance committee meeting if you're available. We have been receiving a lot of correspondence on that issue and we are all paying close attention, um, but it is helpful if anyone can be present at the meetings because they're very productive. Um, okay, so moving on to the finance committee. Oh, it's Jamie. That's Jamie. Huh. Should we move that item down? You can, Madam Chair. If you, if you would please, the Chair, I could also uh, do a report regarding the dashboard uh, uh, for where we are at currently. Okay. Let's do that, and then when Councillor Garvin arrives, we can see if he has anything to add. Perfect, thank you. Uh, as you'll notice, looking at the financial dashboard, uh, currently our revenues are tracking fairly robustly, which is, uh, which is good to see at this point of the year. Where if we're we're currently through half, halfway through the year. Uh, excise taxes are tracking about uh, on pace, plus about uh, almost 2% greater than we were at this point last year. Uh, additionally, our uh, revenue sharing is tracking right exactly where we're at, and building permits are up. Down from last year, but the prior two were, were very good, however, we're 60, almost 63%, 64% to actual, so I'm, I'm confident we will make our, our numbers when it comes to that. Sewer fees are one interesting area that we find on there as far as our revenues. We're currently tracking at 47%, and this year, last time, this time last year, we were at 56% uh, to revenues. Uh, we anticipate that we will hit actuals by the year end uh, due to a couple of, uh, well, primarily Maxwell Woods coming on board and the construction taking place there as well as others. So I do anticipate we will hit uh, our, our forecasted revenues. And then when we come down, you will notice this month, uh, salt expenditure has finally shown, shown its reared its ugly head. Uh, that was due to weather that we had in December and uh, we're just, we're in very good shape when it comes to salt. Uh, despite tonight's weather, uh, we're still in decent shape when it comes to that and we will <coughs> we'll be on, on board for where we are as well as overtime numbers tend to be tracking fairly healthy uh, to, to our benefit at this present time at 34 and 31% overtime for police and public works. Excellent. Um, Councillor Garvin, do you need a minute to get settled before turning to the um, Finance Committee report? Uh, nope. 
Matt just reviewed for us the financial dashboard. If, if you had anything to add, you can go ahead otherwise. Yeah, no, thank you very much and apologies for being late. Uh, I was listening to the live stream in the car, so heard uh, heard you give the update on the traffic. There was an accident on the bridge. Um, the uh, finance report for this month, uh, we're halfway through the fiscal year, as I think I heard Matt just allude to. Um, so. Uh, for those non-math majors in the room like me, it's a good time to look at the um, progress of where we are. And um, so thank you, Matt, for, for detailing uh, some of the highlights and um, some of the things that people might question um, about the report itself. Um, the other couple of things that I'll mention, and I know Matt's gonna touch on in his manager's report shortly, is um, uh, at last week's uh, school building committee meeting, um, Matt gave a very good and detailed presentation to that group and uh, the audience assembled um, about the town's borrowing capacity. So one of the important things that um, that committee is looking at is uh, you know, not only the needs of the buildings and, and um, potential solutions to some of the uh, needs that have been identified and detailed in um, the consultants' reports to date, but also what's our capacity to actually you know, pay for that and finance it and, and if we need to bond and borrow for it. Um, so I won't get into a lot of detail at this point. Um, suffice to say, uh, the town is in a very, you know, what, what the town has going for it from a financial perspective is that we don't have a lot of outstanding debt currently, especially relative to some of our peer communities. Um, we also have an extremely good um, credit rating uh, amongst the credit rating agencies. So when you combine those things, if we, you know, whether it's for school buildings or as we saw last year for um, uh, uh, some of our lease purchase agreements, things like that, the town's in a very favorable position when it comes to um, uh, uh, any potential debt to take on. Question as, as always with any of that just becomes, you know, what is the appetite of the community um, and what is sort of the ceiling and threshold um, for that? And so um, I just wanted to let this group know that that is definitely one of the things that's being closely examined and scrutinized so that we can balance wants and needs versus realities of, of what the town can actually pay for. Uh, so that was one thing. Uh, the other is um, that, again, I think Matt will be touching on this, but we will be um, soon getting presentation from the auditors. Um, and um, without uh, too much of a spoiler alert, we have, I think we can be looking forward to a very good report from the auditors uh, when we have that meeting in a few weeks. Um, so uh, that should be coming up on the horizon as well. So. Uh, I think that that's it, unless anybody has any questions about any of the control documents or anything like that. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, we now have an opportunity for citizens to raise anything that is not on the agenda this evening. We will have a, a moment for public comment on items on the agenda, but if anyone would like to, to raise an issue that's not on the agenda, this is your opportunity. Seeing no one, we will move on. Um, so welcome to the Pond Cove Playground Committee. And I understand we'll be having a presentation. Oh, I skipped right over the town manager's monthly report. Sorry, Madam Chair. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I would, would have got out of your way if you wanted me to. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say Happy New Year to all. As the new year begins, the staff is currently working on the early stages of fiscal year 21 budget. This includes capital planning, uh, departmental operations, and review of revenues. As part of that review, I'll be adding a review of the current fee structure for council uh, to council to take a look at in February uh, to make decisions as we go forward. Public Works Director O'Malley and I met recently with the town's tree warden, Todd Robbins, and the subjects were long-range planning for tree maintenance in the park, winter moth, and the emerald ash borer, which is a new invasive pest affecting uh, the area, and ash trees specifically. He reported that the winter moth is not as robust this year as we experienced the prior three years, but still requires vigilance. In terms of the emerald ash borer, he is working uh, with staff at the Thomas Memorial Library to provide an informational program in the near future, so keep your eyes out for that. Uh, the search for the new library director is currently underway. The search committee will be meeting tomorrow night and reviewing the application packets that we have received so far, or th that we did receive prior to the deadline. We'll be scheduling first round interviews and moving the process forward. Rachel Davis will be serving as our interim library director once Kyle Niegebauer finishes his duties, and we hope to have a new director in place by mid to late February. 
Thursday evening at 7 p.m., we'll be hosting a public information session right in this room regarding the proposed new sidewalk sections in the town center. With the first segment, which is planned for construction this spring, will be from Cumberland Farms to the Methodist Church on the opposite side from where we currently have the sidewalk. <clears throat> That's part of a municipal partnership initiative that we have with the state. They're providing $90,000 in funding towards that construction. The other two segments are planned for construction in two years, and those will be running from Sea Salt to the Fowler Road as part of a PACS grant that's providing a good amount of funding for that. After many demonstrations and quotes for pricing, I've entered into an agreement with EvoGov Evo for a complete redesign of the town's website. Uh, so we'll be looking at, looking at that launch uh, over the next six months. This will take some time for, because we will be migrating our archives and other content as well as a new design and format. We're looking to have this completed, as I said, prior to the end of the current fiscal year. Uh, finally, Tina Sweeney will be leaving the tax office at the end of January as she enters what we all wish is a very long and happy retirement. Uh, the other two items that I had to discuss were, uh, was my report the other night to the building committee, and a big portion of my experience with that, that committee was to look at financing options and to describe what the, the town's uh, bonding capacity was going to be. There's been some discussion related to, and I'm sure uh, the superintendent and the school board will be sp speaking about this tomorrow night. Uh, however, a lot of it was discussing the uh, capacity of, uh, of, of how much the town can really afford and, and responsibly, I guess is one way to look at it. There's been some discussion of new construction, uh, but not. But one of the larger questions that came about was how much, you know, what, what do we currently have? What I looked at was that, was I had conversations with our, uh, our bonding um, experts that we have used for the town, Joe Quattara from Moores and Cabot, and he had identified allowable ranges, so what I did was advise the committee on that, and looking at a range from roughly 27, to, uh, 27 million dollars, and or upwards up to about, uh, I think it's about close to 40, as debts retired over the next few years, is what they'd be looking at responsibly that would fall within those budget parameters. So uh, it was a robust conversation, to say the least, with the committee members, and they're doing a great job when it comes to this as far as getting all the details and getting to where they need to be. So um, next month, uh, the conversation will be held uh, specifically, I think, more now that they've got the majority of the details that they need from the consultants to come back to looking at uh, what the next steps would be and what the most prudent action is going to be as far as construction or, or renovation. And finally, uh, if, if you would please be so kind as to save January 29th on your calendar for meeting with the auditors. Uh, <laughs> That's, uh, that, that seems to work the best. I was hoping for this week, but uh, they are currently wrapping it up. I do anticipate it will be an efficient evening uh, due to the, uh, this is probably gonna be our best audit in the past three years. Uh, very little to report uh, outside of good. So um, that does seem to work with the superintendent and the school board. So if you could be so kind as to grab that date, uh, it'd be greatly appreciated. It would be 7 p.m. in the Jordan Conference Room. And that's all I have to report, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, now moving to the Pond Cove Playground Committee. And um, for those of you who haven't followed the work of the committee, they um, fundraised to build a new playground, which was greatly appreciated, as I understand, from a lot of parents in the area. Um, they were recognized for their volunteerism, and they are here tonight to report on the project. So welcome.
thank you so much for having us. We are actually here as a group. Some of us adults are representing the Pond Cove Playground Committee. Kids are actual students at Pond Cove Elementary School. And we're here to say a humongous thank you to the Town Council for your support of our building project. Um, and so everybody has a program, a copy of a program that was handed out at our public opening this September. And we're gonna go through a little presentation so you can see where we started and then where we ended. Okay, great. All right, so we formed our uh, 501c3 in fall of 2019. And um, this was to build a playground designed for Pond Cove Elementary School, and the budget of that was about 300,000. So we knew we needed to put together an ambitious campaign, and uh, we founded that um, nonprofit um, with the mission of both supporting the build of the, camp of the playground, but also the maintenance. So our nonprofit will live on and pass on to lucky parents after we outgrow Pond Cove to make sure that that space is always maintained <coughs> and the programming potential lives on. Um, so this is a picture of the playground before our work. And this is the design that we, we will take you through. Um, there was an existing nature land that the teachers loved, but there was want and need to renovate it. And so the plans to renovate nature land included new raised garden beds, irrigation, uh, a willow teepee, a bird and butterfly garden for observation, fruit trees, a gazebo for an outdoor classroom, a hobbit house shed for all of their supplies, and a weather station. And Lindsay um, Barrett, who's here, is our nature land coordinator, and she spent a lot of time um, putting together those details. Then there was um, there was no little adventure land, and what the playground and the school really needed was something for uh, younger learners. So if we were going to put together a um, smaller K through two adventure play area, it would have a wood. Um, fort, it would have a sand and boat area, it would have a bridge, um, new swings, a log balance area, a hillside slide, and an omni spinner. Um, these are the old swings along the um, back fence, and a part of the plans included new swings and then a hillside slide to traverse a previously uh, fairly dangerous slope. And then going into big adventure land, the last section, um, we decided and, and the architect decided that the best way to solve that other slope would be a bigger hillside slide, um, a new wood play fixture, um, a hill and tunnel, a grassy field for sports, um, new swings, and then in a breezeway, Let's see, grassy field, breezeway. In this breezeway, um, it was previously underused, so the architect and the school discussed a um, ping pong table, four square, and um, a chalkboard mural in order to make this more of a social space. So uh, we came here to the town about a year ago, exactly, and we talked about the plans, and we talked about how 300,000 was ambitious for a school community, and from the very beginning, uh, everybody was extremely hospitable and supportive, and uh, we are just incredibly grateful. We came away from a few meetings with the announcement that the town was going to be um, helping us kick off our campaign with a first um, gift of $50,000, and then a matching gift if we could prove um, support from other sources in the community to help us along. And so you're seeing a picture of two other excited students. Um, that gift was definitely the way to launch us forward. And um, we to in, in the end, we raised 330,000 based on increased costs. Um, about 30 of that was in-kind services and materials, but the 100,000 from the town was huge. So here is, I thought, for anyone who couldn't come, we had this public opening and it was really exciting. We did a ribbon cutting and mentioned all of uh, you, <laughs> all of our other partners, and um, had
had face painting and cotton candy and a ribbon cutting that happened just like this. <laughs> so that was a, a huge success. And then um, for some images of the completed playground, Here's that hillside um, tunnel that we talked about. The big adventure, this is Big Adventure Land's huge new play structure with twisty slides. This is a concrete ping pong table in the breezeway. New swings, hillside slide versus that um, erosion and injury riddled slope before that. Um, this is the back fence looking towards Little Adventureland with a little platform for kids to socialize and then the Gaga Ball Pit. Um, there's the smaller hillside slide going into Little Adventureland. The Omni Spinner, which is a huge hit. <laughs> a bridge in, into the sand and boat area. The Little Adventureland wood fort. There's the boat. And then into Natureland, the weather station the raised garden beds, including a root viewing um, panel, um, a leaf composting station, a rotting log station. So we're really looking to make these kids explorers of their natural space. Um, this is the meadow that we're gonna, uh, that we'll be growing in. Um, the refurbished gazebo and the Hobbit house with a little fireplace outside. And the Hobbit house is full of all kinds of tools. So this, has been a really exciting um, project to work on. And student feedback so far, and I'll pass it off to Erin in a minute, um, Erin Taylor, school nurse, has been fantastic. There have been really special letters shared with the committee um, of students' favorite fixtures and what they hope to do out there. Um, the programming has started and it will only continue. We have great partners with the Autobahn and the Land Trust. Um, so just some of the things that have happened so far are... That's me. Are, um, That's me, everybody. <laughs> I said that to so me. Okay. Our class is going out to the weather station to look at the thermometers and all of the tools, the rain collection and anemometers at the top and the wind sock, um, planting bulbs, collecting leaves, um, harvesting spinach, and um, sourcing sunflower seeds for planting. So that's just some of the stuff happening. So we are here to say it's just the start. There's a great space for everyone, and we're so grateful. And I'll pass it over to Erin. We have we have a special gift for um, for you all. Um, I had reached out to several of the classrooms um, just to give you a sampling of really what this playground means to our students. Um, so I'm going to have my little friends here pass out some letters to you. So the um, class from first grade, second grade, and fourth grade have written some thank you notes to you just to give you a sense of what they like about the playground, their favorite features. Um, When I first approached you in, I don't even, way back in the fall, when we were looking to even see if we could fundraise about this project, one of the um, areas of concern was the safety on the playground. And since we've redone the playground, injury levels are significantly down. Children have places to explore and play and discover, and it has made an incredible difference to um, our school community. So we're very thankful for this. I hope you enjoyed those letters because they were <laughs> really sweet to read as they came into my office. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. High praise for the Omni Thank Spinner. <laughs> that was the favorite. Omni Spinner and Hillside Slide, hands down, were the absolute favorite for the kids. Okay, so thank you.
Thank very you much. so much. Thank, Thank you for having you us. For coming. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any councillors have any follow-up for the playground committee? Questions, comments? No. Thank you. Thank you. We will now move on to our next item on the agenda, um, which is review of the draft minutes of the town council meeting held on December 9th, 2019. We'll just give our, our guests a minute to exit. Okay, do I have a motion to um, accept the draft minutes of the meeting held on December 9th, 2019? So moved. A second? Councillor Devereaux. Um, any comment on the meeting uh, minutes? No? Um, all in favor? It's unanimous. Okay. Um, we're now moving on to item 27 uh, 2020, lease of building number 326 at Fort Williams Park. We have an opportunity for public comment. Um, it's typically limited to 15 minutes total, three minutes per person. I understand there may be a number of people willing to, uh, wanting to speak on this issue, and um, if the council's not opposed, I'm not opposed to allowing that period to run over the 15 minutes, but I would just ask that people try to keep their comments brief within the three minute limit to allow ever, others a chance to speak. Um, so I'll, I'll open for public comment. If you'd come up to the microphone, um, please just identify yourself by name and address. David Laurie, I live at 189 Spurwink Avenue, Cape Elizabeth. Uh, I am a, not only a resident, I'm a frequent user of the park. I'm there with my dog once or twice a day sometimes. Uh, depends on how busy I am. Today I didn't get there because I had to be in court on this matter. <coughs> and uh, also I finally got back to my office and got out a memo which hopefully some of you or all of you had the chance to read, uh, but I'm going to go over it now. And uh, I did that uh, because I expected that there would be a lot of people here willing to, ready and willing to speak on what has been going on there uh, in terms of the litigation and what went on there in the past. Um, this is the uh, fourth time that uh, uh, Connie Jordan has attempted to evict uh, her subtenant, Rachel Walls. And I represent Rachel Walls in this litigation. Um, she tried in 2017 three times, and I think there are some other tenants here who may be able to speak of their own knowledge as to what happened at that time. Um, Rachel Wall, sorry, Con Constance Jordan is the landlord. She operates a business called Behavior Health Resources. And as far as I know, she has no relation to the two Jordans on the council, but that's something the public perception is that she is because people keep coming up to me and telling me that she is. Uh, but uh, I, I'm raising the issue just so we have a chance to clear the air here as to what, if any, relationship there is. And uh, uh, some of these things have gone on in the town are, how to put it, inexplicable 
and that's why it's going to be important that we uh, get this all out uh, into the open and make sure that there is in fact nothing going on untoward. But uh, I, I th have, have any of you been to the uh, Building 326 and visited the Rachel Walls um, Academy, uh, not Academy, exhibition space? Uh, no one? None of the counselors? I know you've been invited a couple of times because I suggested that you be invited so you could see what was going on there. It's unfortunate that you didn't make it. Uh, Rachel Walls is here to talk about it and so are a number of other people. It's uh, a very important cultural uh, asset of the town and that's why I don't understand why um, at least the manager seems anxious to get rid of them get rid of it one way or the other. Uh, it's, so far it's been convenient uh, for him to be able to say that this is a dispute between a tenant and a subtenant of the town and that they don't want to get involved. But they have got themselves involved very much as I go over it. Uh, this case would have been dismissed long ago, uh, but for uh, the town managers uh, giving out uh, this uh, revocation of notice of termination of tenancy, reinstatement of lease notice, um, which basically undermined the fact that Connie Jordan has not been paying her rent to the town. She was $10,000 in arrear, nobody in arrears, nobody in the town that I talked to seemed to know or care about that until I wrote a letter to the manager insisting that he do something about it. The town council who was here, who works for the town, for the town council, and for the town manager. Excuse uh, me, Mr. Lorry. Yes. It, you've used your three minutes and a little bit more. Um, I understand you have a lot to say, but just out of respect for others who want to speak this evening, if you could just please wrap up the comments and. If we have time after and there are questions, um, maybe you could come back up. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure that everybody understands that she, that uh, Ms. Jordan has enjoyed a very beneficial lease there, uh, which she is able to, in which she is able to sublet, and she has earned, and the difference between the rent that she pays the town, which is $2,000, and the $3,500, now $3,600 that Ms. Walls pays her, she has earned $57,000 just in that difference over the three-year period at $1,600 a month times 36 um, months. And uh, it's very important that uh, you in fact get control of this property back from her uh, because she doesn't use it, she just sublets it and does it both on a net basis. And uh, it's really important that we preserve that asset there. I've sent you all memos, a copy of a memo with lengthy remarks. I hope you all read it. If it, it, got, it should have got to you by email, but as I said, I was in court earlier, so I didn't get to send that until the last minute. I've got extra copies here for those of you uh, who don't think you've got it already electronically, and along with the Exhibit A, which is the, the reinstatement uh, statement from the, uh, from the manager, I noticed that you didn't get that in your package. You didn't get much in your package. And in fact, what's proposed is legally nonsense, you will find if you read this. So I'm here. And I'll come back later, hopefully, because uh, I think you probably will have time. And I also want you to hear from all of these people who are here for this item. Um, so it's very important that you do what you can to keep Rachel Walls's gallery there. I went to see it when she had it open to the public for a couple of months. Um, the town has been kind of 
miserly about time and other resources during the time that she has been there. Uh, you, the public has trouble finding it because she can't get any signage and uh, off-premises and the signage on-premises was also very uh, uh, problematic. Uh, and it's, uh, how to put it, the, Rachel grew up in this town. Well, I'll let her tell you. Thank, Thank you. you. And hopefully I'll come back later. And we did receive your, your memo. Yeah, is there Thank anybody you. who needs a copy who didn't get it? I got it. Whatever. And I, I omitted, because I was in a rush, I omitted the Exhibit A, which is the revocation uh, notice, which is what you're supposed to be reinstating tonight. Uh, it, it makes no sense uh, for you to be giving up this property or your rights in this property, which is what's happening. Uh, and uh, Rachel is, it seems like the Mr. town. Mr. Laurie, if okay. you could please, All right. thank All you. Right. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Eric Witten. I'm a resident of South Portland, uh, Fairlawn Avenue, 16 Fairlawn Avenue. Um, I am a former subtenant of the space in question, 326, uh, inside Fort Williams Park. Um, I started a business, entered into a lease with Connie Jordan, August 2016. My goal was to stay there long term. Uh, three years was the term that I was looking for, but her cycle was coming up in nine months. Her cycle meaning the lease she held with Cape Elizabeth. What had been um, shared with me was that once her lease renewed, mine would automatically renew, renew in term for that successive three year term. term. Um, uh, Okay, so August 2016 is when I originally moved in. About nine months, oh, and, and when I say that was verbally told to me, I just want you to know that was written into my lease. It was written into my lease that as long as her lease term renewed with the town, my space would also renew. About nine months later, um, without any notice, uh, what I learned was that my space had in fact been rented to another organization altogether. Rachel, here. Um, and this is something that Connie knew, but never shared with me. What she shared with me was the exact opposite, which was that I had nothing to worry about. I was a great tenant. I'd be there for a long time, as long as I wanted. Um, but obviously that wasn't the case. I, and I, I don't know why. I don't know if this was just an honest mistake, if it was a mistake made from greed, negligence, couldn't tell you. I can only share with you my experience, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have about my experience, which was short, nine months. When it came to light that that space was actually rented, not to me, but to another party at the same time, um, I was, uh, I was um, threatened by Ms. Jordan and her attorneys. I was told that I was um, harassing other tenants in the building. I was told that I was, um, uh, liable for tortious interference against whom I don't know either of those claims. There's no base to them, but these are things that were, these are allegations made by her attorneys towards me. Um, uh, I did nothing wrong in any of this. I did nothing wrong whatsoever. Model tenant, paid my rent on time, quiet, conducted my business, volunteered in the park. I made no mistakes with my end of the agreement with the contract. Uh, she did. Um, and rather than confront those challenges and those problems and work them out as adults and professional people and come to some resolution, instead, I couldn't believe that I was being accused of these horrible things. I had just no basis in truth whatsoever. Um, so I just want to share with the, the, the council here that characterization of my experience as a subtenant of that building, trying to work with Connie Jordan. Um, and I will say this to keep my time short. August 2017, 
I drafted an email to Mr. Sturgis outlining the full scope of this experience that I had. All of this, over two years ago, has been shared with you. Not looking for anything for myself, but to inform you as the decision maker what to give consideration to and who you do business with and who represents those buildings. Um, it'd, be one thing, it'd be one thing if that was private property. Perhaps then you can say this is a simple dispute between a tenant and a landlord, but it's not private property. So I did let you know about that over two years ago. Um, and I would hope that you would share that with the other members here. I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has. If not, I'm done. Thank you. Um, anyone else? My name is um, Marianne Terraza, and I've lived in Cape Elizabeth for now 32 years. And um, so I'm a little nervous. I'm not really good at public speaking, so I don't know why. But I'm a psychiatric nurse, nurse practitioner, so I rented space at 326 um, uh, on Shore Road from 2012 until we were um, asked to leave in 2017. So I guess I just wanted to highlight a couple of things about my experience there and the experience of my colleagues. Um, there were several colleagues, myself, um, uh, two psychologists and another th a therapist and another nurse practitioner. We all moved into this lovely space when a practice that we all worked together and was sort of abruptly closing. <clears throat> so Connie was a colleague and I preface my comments to it's a little bit difficult because she is a colleague. We work in the same profession in psychiatry. So I've had to really kind of um, think about how would I, I would approach this because I will continue to have a clinical relationship with her in the community. I can tell you that when Eric moved in, he was nothing that was described. I mean, I was, um, I just have to let you know that he was a lovely tenant, co-tenant in the, in the beautiful office downstairs. We had lots of jokes and fun for the brief time he was there. Nothing about his behavior could ever be considered anything but lovely. So, I mean, that characterization of that, I did not know that until he just spoke that. So that was quite disturbing. My point was, was I had contacted, you know, after, shortly after we moved in there, it became apparent that Ms. Jordan was just not really going to be a very good landlord, so she never really became a good steward of that beautiful property. So um, when we would ask for things, things that she'd promised, and come, some things that maybe weren't so, you know, troubling, but signage, it took a long time. There was an issue with the ramp. We had, um, you know, it was, you know, the handicap accessibility. There was all these things that came in question. But I wanted to highlight that what happened was she became increasingly um, not very nice. She just wasn't a good steward. So we, we did, we had to do a lot on our own. So for a couple of years, we learned to just keep our mouths shut because she was very controlling with the lease. I called the former town manager on two occasions, as did one of the other, my other colleagues, who basically um, at one point said, I'll get back to you and never did. Because I started to tell my, my neighbors and friends that I don't understand why she can rent this building and char and, and we, first of all, we didn't know what the rent was. I mean, I finally realized I could look this up in public, <laughs> publicly and see what she was paying. How she could do that and make money, and then realize she was making quite a bit of money. And then, I, as a as a community member, that began to bother me. I felt like this doesn't make sense. And then, as my friends and neighbors said, "You're living well. How can that?" And everybody, nobody, not one person thought that was the right thing. That it was a town-owned property. Somebody rents it, sublets it, it's not private, and makes money. Um, but, you know, so just, just in general, that just didn't seem to sit well. 
I guess further, you know, further as things got along, uh, moved along, we couldn't ask questions. We had at one point there was a vagrant that actually lived there for a month that she allowed to stay there. We had a problem with flies. Um, she told us it was going to be our responsibility. And then she abruptly, you know, uh, told us that we had to leave. She did give us two months notice when it was time to leave, but we were all scrambling because the preceding year she gave, she, she increased our rent dramatically and then, um, but only gave us a very brief time. She gave us 30 days to increase our rent. And as a clinician, as a practitioner, it's difficult to move office within 30 days. I asked her for an extension. She would not do that. So just in general, you know, very difficult. Nobody answered any questions. I just wanted to know how could this be? I could not find anybody who agreed with me. And then the more questions we asked, the more difficult she became. And our final day, we were in saying goodbye, we were having lunch together, and one of our other colleagues who had moved in after us, who thought that she was not going to be asked to leave, learned later that she was also part of the release, releasing of the lease. The, you know, Rachel, this was leased to her while we were all there, and she never told us. And I did ask Ms. Jordan in January, and this is my final statement, you know, um, so is the rent gonna go up again? Any changes? And she said, no changes. When one of our other colleagues a month later had, had learned that Rachel was actually in the process of le releasing the building. So there was this overlap that she purposely withheld from us. We, and, you know, again, she was, leasing this property that the town owned that we were paying for. And um, there were very, a lot of covert um, discussions about it. There was not a time that anybody thought it was a really good idea, but it was so beautiful and we just, you know, it's very hard to move a clinical practice. So I'll answer any questions as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we've now reached about 19 minutes of the comment period Do any um, counselors object to continuing to receive public comment? Chair Adam, I, I don't object, but I would strongly appeal to everybody who's coming forward. I'm very interested in hearing the statements that you have to make, but each speaker has gone well past the three minute limit and just in the matter of fairness, I think if you could all do a much better job of sticking to the three minutes, that would be appreciated. Good evening, uh, my name is Jeffrey Whitaker. Uh, I've only lived in Cape Elizabeth for a little while. I live at 34 Broad Cove Road. And um, it would be helpful probably to get a timer so people standing here would know exactly when three minutes was up, similar to Congress. I'll if that's you and I'll raise my hand. Very good, reached. maybe give me a one minute warning and then I'll wrap up. Uh, no, that's all right, just hold it right there. There you go. Um, It'd be easy to stand here and just pile on, and that's not worthwhile for you and it's not worthwhile for us. But the points that really need to be made is that from a simple business standpoint, it makes no sense to monopolize the rent uh, and leasing of a building as valuable as 326 uh, is in Fort Williams Park. It's actually, I believe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, part of a national monument that particular property is visited by people from all over the world on an annual basis. And to put your eggs in one basket and not be at least a little bit, uh, I guess, adventurous, to maybe offer it to groups that may want to get together to lease it for a purpose such as what Rachel is doing, some sort of educational thing, keeping it in control, but under the control of one person for the simple idea to make money, I believe does not go with the common knowledge of how this town is run and why people love to live here. I wanna read part of an email that was received from Ms. Jordan. And again, we are simply trying to appeal to you that there's probably a better way to do this. 
Uh, this is to uh, Ms. Terraza. Would you please remit your rent for May promptly at this point? You are a week overdue now for the May rent and March snow costs of $25 per office and a month are a month over, overdue for, and a month overdue for February costs of 62.50 per office. The total is $755. You skim down in this email and this is our landlord talking. She basically inserts a part of the lease and then threatens that she doesn't want to she doesn't want to, thank you, uh, have to go after all of the money that she contends that uh, we owed uh, and says, I would prefer not to pull the pin on that grenade. I'm just trying to give you an idea of the sense of how that she related to us as tenants. Uh, in March of 2016, I questioned, after reading the lease, I questioned whether she had the right to charge us for snow plowing because the town had the responsibility, according to the lease, for the snow plowing in the park. She then sent an email to Ms. Terraza calling me pejorative simply because I asked a question and asked that I not communicate with her again. Finally, on March 25th, she sends the email telling us that she is evicting us. One second. Yes, if you could that, that's, that's all well and good. But then she follows up with another email regarding rent. And when you're evicted, typically you don't worry about, especially if you've paid your rent the whole time, you don't worry about the final month. So on that date, that the rent was due, I did not pay the rent because within 25 more days, we would be paying the entire amount. But even after leasing from her for five years, she treated us like she didn't know any of us. And again, I think that the town needs to be careful who they do business with. And it would be nice to see the town try to do something for the good of the entire community and not just for one person. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Victoria Browning Wyeth. I live in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and have a house in Cushing, Maine. I'm a friend of Rachel Walls and a colleague. To give you a little background on myself, I have a master's in psychology and work in the psychiatry department at the University of Pennsylvania. Additionally, I lecture internationally on the work of my grandfather, Andrew Wyeth, as well as curating his shows. I'm here to basically tell you about Rachel's talent. Rachel has this incredible ability to bring art to life for young people. And as I'm sure you are acutely aware, schools, if not, if they're not cutting art, are definitely um, taking so much uh, away from it. And the thing that Rachel does, she not only brings these kids into this gallery that is just wallpapered in the most incredible art you've ever seen, she brings context to it. And you know, if you go there, for example, the work of Dalov Ivkars, this wonderful artist she represents, she knew Dalov. So she doesn't just explain the art, she talks about watching Dalov create the art. Furthermore, she brings the paintbrushes out. She had this recent exhibition of the sculptor and brought out his chisel, his, you know, his, his work tools and so forth. Do you know how incredible that is for kids that have no access to art to actually see how this stuff has been created? So the last thing I really want to explain to you as you know, and I know we have no kids in the room, kids are plagued by anxiety and depression. I know this not only as a therapist, but in addition to lecturing on my grandfather, I lecture all over um, in schools. I'm actually here to, to lecture to prisoners tomorrow on the work of my grandfather. These kids need a way to release their anxiety and depression. And quite honestly, going to an artwork, seeing this wonderful art and creating their own piece of artwork is the best way to do that. So I'm gonna leave you with two sentences from seventh graders, okay, who we know are not always 
the most articulate individuals, right? Okay. So this young woman said, thank you so much for the wonderful time we had with your beautiful artwork. I especially love the color and pattern in the art piece. I have 50 year olds that can't articulate their ability to understand art that much. And finally, this young man said, I love the Dalib Ipgar painting about the dying soldier. I think it really shows the side of war that we tend not to see. Please don't take this place away from Rachel. It really is important to the community and more importantly to the kids. Thank you. My name is Rosemary Reed. I'm a former town councilor uh, in this body and a longtime resident of Cape Elizabeth. I knew I couldn't put in three minutes everything I wanted the council to know that is omitted from your packet of material, omitted from the two and a half years that Rachel has been in the fort and not understand the amount of work she does with uh, children, education, and art education. Many schools have attended her uh, gallery and uh, there has been gentle use of that building. She's made an investment of $27,000 of her own money to the interior of the building in which you will find that um, a former member of the Fort Williams Advisory uh, Committee and the master plan for Fort Williams for 2011 when he came said the building had never looked so good. You'll notice that the item of the handicap ramp has been around, Mr. Hill, uh, since 2012 and did not begin with Rachel Walls, but began with the fall of one of Rachel Walls' patrons. Rachel is not the person who told that person to sue. Uh, I just want you to know that the unintended consequences of many of the things that happened in the decade that I served on the town council and the school board became known after the fact, and I respectfully request that the town council take no action on this item without an executive session to learn many of the things they don't already know, should know, do not know, and were not told in the packet of material. You don't even have the leases to compare to. And oh, did I say Rachel is my daughter? Rachel is one of my children, she is my daughter. And her lease gave her three years, not two years. And Rachel did not default on her rent. Connie Jordan in a handwritten envelope addressed to Rachel at Rachel's home at 16 Fenway Road returned her payment, which is why she told the town she could not afford to pay her rent. It wasn't because Rachel didn't pay her rent. It was because Connie no longer wanted to deal with Rachel because she wanted things like the rent to be used to pay for the handicap ramp, which was an ADA requirement. And thank you for finally fixing it last month. I'm available if anyone wants to talk to me. Do you need my address? It's not Cape Elizabeth anymore. Thank you. But I might move back if Rachel's house becomes available because Rachel Wall's fine art closes. I am Rachel Walls. It's very nice to see all of you this evening. 
I just wanted to um, touch on some things that have been alluded to, but no one's expressly discussed in their previous comments. Um, one is that um, it was brought up that uh, Connie Jordan is in default of her lease, and that is in fact true. She is in default of her lease. Um, she did return my payments of rent starting in June, and so I have paid all of the money that I should have been paying directly to Connie into the district court in uh, Portland. And uh, one of the things that I do want all of you to know, and I think you know from pe previous um, uh, communications that I've sent to the council and to the town manager, I have no problem um, paying Ms. Jordan's default and curing it so the town is made whole. And I have no problem continuing to pay the amount of rent that I'm currently paying to Ms. Jordan directly to the town so that revenue does not go to a private individual, but instead goes directly to the town so the town can use those funds to continue to maintain and enhance Fort Williams Park and also the building. And I think that's something that really should be taken into consideration. It does not seem to me to be fiscally prudent to take revenue generating assets owned by the town out of the revenue pool if there's no reason to. And I understand that there was a recommendation made that the park manager move into the space that I currently occupy. Um, I have um, on I have three different iterations of the square footage based on leases that I received from Ms. Jordan of how much space I actually have in Building 326. So depending on which lease you read, I have somewhere between three and 2,000 square feet of space. I don't know how much office space it is that's required to properly house the park staff that the fort requires, but that does seem like a lot of space, and I'm not sure that it's necessarily a good use of that space if it could continue to bring in revenue to the park. So I did want it made clear to the entire council and to the taxpayers of Cape Elizabeth and to the public that I am absolutely willing to cure Connie Jordan's default tomorrow during business hours so that the default is no longer an issue and make any kind of arrangement moving forward to take over the remainder of her lease and to make any amendments to include the full amount that I have been paying and I'm used to paying and have a history of paying for over two years directly to the town of Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment on this issue? We're going to close the public comment period. Um, I know, I, I believe most of the counselors are familiar with this issue, but um, I'm going to turn it over to Matt briefly to just queue it up, please. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman, I will. I know there's been a lot of information that's been provided, so I'll try to, if I can, do a, a high level. I also had uh, requested that Mike Hill, who's our attorney, uh, come this evening as well to provide uh, some additional information uh, as needed if the council may need him as a resource, as well as touch on some areas that quite frankly aren't within my uh, aren't within my job description and they're more of a legal legal fashion. <clears throat> Let me start off by stating that uh, one of the items that we have and it's been a it's been a bone of contention or a problem since I became manager was the sub leasing issue that we have within our leases and it's been no I, I've not been uh, shy about sharing this with the council that as we renew every lease, we have been removing that as an item, uh, primarily because of situations that have existed here uh, where you have a tenant, uh, our tenant and a, a subtenant uh, controversy, uh, which tends to try to put the landlord or the property owner in a difficult position to try to, uh, or at least to be requested to try to mitigate the situation. Uh, right now, as uh, Mr. Laurie is, and as well as Ms. Walls and other speakers have indicated, there is active litigation that's taking place. Uh, the town is not a party that exists within this, within this discussion. I know that they went to court as recently as this afternoon. Uh, I know this because I was subpoenaed, uh, called, and then, and then released. Uh, 
but it's been ongoing. I think Mr. Lori said there's been five different uh, instances where they've been uh, in front of, in front of the court system. Okay. And we are actively involved in now. In the dispute, okay, thank you for that. I guess ultimately, what I'm not trying to do and what the town is not trying to do is trying to choose winners and losers when it comes into this, but we do have a relationship that exists with Miss Jordan as our tenant, and so we have a contractually obligated issue to go through with that. As far as, this is the lease that I inherited as, as it came along uh, from, from multiple years. Uh, it was renewed, uh, thinking everything was fine. At that point, I received Mr. Witten's email and others after the renewal had taken place. Uh, but there have been no reasons why the town has been able to, to terminate the lease until now, uh, where we've, what we've gone into is a non-payment for the lease. Um, what, we have, what I have done in the past was we began, as Mr. Laurie had pointed out, the termination, uh, thinking that it was gonna run in line with the discussion or the court system where a decision would be made and we could move forward one way or the other, whether Ms. Walls prevailed or whether Ms. Jordan prevailed. As that has gone on, it's been extended and extended for different appeals that have taken place. What I ended up doing, uh, working with Mr. Hill, was to first come up with a, the termination of the agreement and then secondly say, okay, this is going on further. Uh, you're gonna need additional time to resolve your differences. My desire is that the town does become whole. Uh, will I say that, I mean, is there a difference obviously that exists in mathematically between what the rent that is paid by Ms. Walls versus what Ms. Jordan is paying us through behavioral health resources? Those are the terms of the agreement that we have and we're contractually obligated to it. Do I find that, do I find that to be a, a point that I'm happy about? I would say no. Uh, at the same time, uh, that's those are the tier, terms of the deal that they've gone through. Our lease has the sub the sub leasing ability, so she's taking advantage. Of, and, and this isn't meant to be a critical statement. It's a business thing where there's an advantage that's taken between the rent that's paid at market versus what what the lease terms were, which were intended to be at market rate when they were established. Ultimately, what I'm looking to do this evening is to have the council ratify the decision that we made to try to get to the end of the end of the lease agreement, so they can work through their legal dispute one way or the other and find a solution that the court shall provide. Uh, one of the issues that we came forward with, as far as the town uh, getting through that or extending to that point of the end of May, when the when the first initial lease or the current lease expires is that Ms. Jordan will walk away from her ability to renew for two years after that. So that gives them some time to work through that. Hopefully at the time or when we get through that, the town will then be made whole when this is reconciled, either again to Ms. Walls, to Ms. Walls' ability uh, to her benefit or to Ms. Jordan's benefit. One way or the other, the current funds, and Ms. Walls is accurate as heck, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna be uh, I won't dispute the fact that the money's been paid in escrow to the court. So at some point, the town needs to be repaid, but we're hoping that they can work through that one way or the other, and the town will be made whole. We'll get to the end of May. The town will come, they'll come back to the town as an asset. My desire at that point is to move the, our park manager into that space, as well as we have a number of breeders that work out of that space. We have rangers, we have the park foreman that all work out of there, which wouldn't be the full space just for Mr. Cutter. It would be for a multiple number of employees who currently now are working out of what is more or less a large garage. And it doesn't work as a functional space. Things have changed in the park, as we all know, over the past few years, whereas now we have a park manager there who needs to interact with different tours and other, other situations. Now it's created a need for us to have that space in the town. It happens to line up. My desire would have been to do this in two years as the lease expired. If Ms. Jordan had extended her lease to the two years, that was my long range plan. This has kind of brought this forward to a more current short term plan to be able to satisfy the need that we do and does exist. I know there was a lot to say, Madam Chair, but uh, there's a lot there on the table, so I tried to lay as much out as I could. And I have Mr. Hill here as well to, uh, to talk about how, what the perspective is, if the council would so like to, to have that. Excuse me. I'm sorry, but the, the opportunity for public comment is closed. We're going to move on to the portion of this where the council now discusses, and, and then we'll sort of 
take the temperature from, from that point on. So um, I, I anticipate that someone likely will wish to hear from Mr. Hill, but before that, I'd like to entertain a... I need to uh, disclose a couple of things. Yes. Number one, um, uh, Connie Jordan is a friend, but she is not a close relative. But Connie and I have known each other for a number of years. Um, in addition, um, Rachel's mother, Rosemary, and I uh, used to work together at UNOM, and I've known her for quite a while. So I know both parties, and uh, I feel that I can be objective, but I just need to put that out there to everybody. Okay. Uh, any, any comment on that from any other counselor? Uh, so just to, to clarify, it, it, um, so to the question that had been raised of, oh, is she like a first cousin or a second cousin, the answer is no. Right. Yeah, she right. is not. And, and uh, Caitlin, same thing, I assume? I have no idea who she is. Great. All right. Okay. Um, so I'd like to entertain a motion uh, to start the discussion, whether it's um, the draft motion included in the agenda or another motion that any counselor wishes to make at this time. Can we go to discussion first? Um, procedurally, I don't, I don't have my cheat sheet with me, <laughs> um, but I, I'd be happy to, unless there's a, an, um, Councilor Straw, do you have any objection uh, uh, on the basis I, of procedure? I, I stopped taking my cheat sheet with me. <laughs> <laughs> but we've we've been very lackadaisical, um, which I've come to terms with. Um, okay. So, um, as a general yes. matter, <laughs> I mean, I I think it's important to start the discussion, no matter what. So so yes, Councillor Jordan, did you, Caitlin Jordan, did you have a a oh, point to make or a question? Yes, yeah, some questions, I guess. Why, if our ultimate goal is to end the lease in May, are we not? Like, what's what's the cost benefit? Why are we not just ending it now with the termination that we've already given notice for? Like, I'm trying to understand if she owes us back rent, whether we terminate now or we reinstate the lease and it follows through till May, she still owes that same rent. We still have mechanisms in place to get it. So I'm not understanding the benefit to the town in continuing this lease until May and we don't just terminate it now. So I need some help with that. Mr. Hill. So the uh, underlying dispute between uh, behavioral health resources and Ms. Walls uh, as to whether her sub sublease uh, has uh, expired or whether it's to be continued. And there, I don't want to go into the litigation, we're not party to it, and I, I have, we have really tried not to become embroiled in it. But once we found out that uh, Ms. Walls had been making the payments to the court, so there's basically a pool of money available, right. that once that dispute gets resolved, if the money goes to um, behavioral health resources, that will be enough to cure all past due rent to the town. So as I understand it, those funds have been going into the uh, court system, they're held in escrow, and for the months that Ms. Walls has paid rent, which is, as I understand it, every single month she has done this. Um, so the, regardless of whether her lease is extended or not, she's gonna to have to pay behavioral health resources those uh, m for the months that she was actually in possession of, of her space. So when that gets determined, if she wins. when that gets determined, those funds would be available to cure the, the lease. If she wins. But again, but that, uh, I, I'm not getting whether, it, it matters, to, like, I, I guess are we doing it just out of the kindness of our heart? Is that what it is? Because, I mean, Miss Jordan owes us the money, Absolutely. whether or not she wins or loses against Miss Walls. So if we terminate her eviction, 
she can still go play in court with Ms. Walls, but she still owes us the money and she can write a check one way or another, whether it comes out of the escrow account or it comes out of her checkbook. Well, Am I right in my, my line of thinking, just trying to make sure I'm... Yeah, if the money is there, because it's not Connie Jordan who's the, our tenant, the town's tenant. It's Behavioral Health Resources, which is a corporation that has no assets, as far as we know. So th this pool of funds is how the town could get paid back by Behavioral Health Resources. Can I ask a gotcha, poll? I'm not one of the lawyers on this group, so I'm going to sound a bit naive. Number, number one, when um, Connie Jordan stopped paying rent, and I assume that uh, she went, as I hear, she went from June until uh, she received some notice of not paying rent, her lease is basically null and void at this point in time, isn't it? No. Why? Well. Because you, you have to follow the terms of the lease in terms of giving a notice. notice of default opportunity okay. to cure, which we, we ended up doing okay. at, in November. Yeah. And the, so, the other question I have is the, the, uh, the money that Rachel Walls was paying to, uh, for rent, was that written to Behavioral Health Services or to Connie Jordan? I don't know. And I think if they were written to Connie Jordan, then Behavioral has no assets again, so is that money available for us to then uh, um, gain access to? Because the agreement is with Behavioral, correct? Yes, the, okay. town's, the town's lease is with Behavioral Health Resources. Okay. So I don't know who the checks were written out to. If, if you want Ms. Walls to answer that? Rachel, backwards. who were they made out to? I have made checks out directly to Connie Jordan. Okay. In the past, and then I um, have made the payments to the court did ask that when I paid into court, to district court, that they be made to behavioral okay. resources. But I have also been told by the court if I do prevail, which I have five times previously, each time she's tried to evict me, that I will be getting my money back. Um, other questions for Ms. Real? Yes, Councilor Straw. Uh, so I just want to touch on a couple of the, the factual things that were stated just so the general public really grasp these. So number one, uh, this entire lease relationship that the town has with the, we'll call them the, the primary tenant at the building, this all predates the current town manager. This all happened under the old town manager. It is not the current town manager. Yes, he was for one of the renewals shortly after he began as town manager, but this all started under the prior town manager, just so we're clear. Uh, number two, my understanding is all this also happened before we brought in the finance director, and you might see why we brought in a finance director now. Um, so I just want to hit on those two points, so I just want to make those observations. And I'm going to throw in a point that our office did not draft that lease. <laughs> Councillor Caitlin Jordan. Okay. So the last few checks you've given to the court have been to behavioral health. So in theory, if behavioral health prevails, they all of a sudden have money to pay our back rent. Correct. And if behavioral health does not prevail, anyone got insight other than what Rachel's saying, that she gets all her money back and behavioral health gets nothing? Well. Um, my understanding was she'd have to pay for those months that right, she, if she So if she possession. prevails that yes, she still has the lease, then to me it would make sense that you've got to pay your, your rent for that lease. So I don't know if you would get all your money back. I would think it would still, if you prevail in having the lease, you'd have to pay your rent. Can I just add something that came up today? What we were in court today discussing was actually if she has a valid lease or not. And that is something that um, a judge is going to be ruling on. And um, uh, town manager Sturgis did send a termination notice to Ms. Jordan that the lease had been terminated. And so um, really, you know, one of the things that we discussed in court today is how does someone who doesn't have a lease um, have possession and the right to receive funds for a building that she doesn't have a lease on? And unless um, you know, you know, you 
change the decision, um, you know, to uh, take her lease away because she didn't honor the terms of the lease that she signed with the town and she did default. She was not given the 15 days that it states in her lease that she can to cure. She was given over six months to cure the default and has not. Well, <clears throat> she was given 15 day notice. Right. There, there was time where she was behind on her rent and the notice wasn't given, but. Yes, that's the other thing. She, the money was due in November, and when she didn't pay, on November 15th, um, a town manager of Sturgis did extend her um, time period to pay to December 27th, and my understanding is that she didn't pay in full by December 27th either. So basically what was argued in court today is that, um, you know, her lease has been terminated for default and lack of payment, and that is something that, uh, you know, again, we were there, unfortunately none of the rest of you were to hear what the judge said, but um, the judge did find it very problematic that, um, so I'm just going I'm, I'm just going to um, just cut you off, and I apologize, but it seems to me, and I don't know what other counselors think, that we may want to wait to see what the judge decides in this case. Does anyone else else have that sense? Yes, Councilor Straw. So, so uh, it seems to me there's like, like three, three. Uh, one approach we could take is. Um, we just continue with everything as is, don't touch this, the lease or, or non-lease or whatever the situation is, no idea. The, the status quo continues. Uh, option number two is, um, assuming we haven't been foreclosed by anything, who knows what the legal status of any of this is, but presumably option number two is we somehow say, okay, we're ending this lease now, everyone out. The, the, this is over, we're taking back our property. Um, Presumably we might be able to do that, maybe not, I don't know. That would be one option. And another would be this, um, we're gonna let it keep going till May approach, at which point then we're, you don't get that additional two year uh, uh, clause, that's gone. Uh, so it seems like those were the, the three approaches and we went with the, th what's been proposed is that we continue with the third under the argument that it will, it gives us the highest possible, perhaps it gives us a good, a better possibility of being made whole. Whereas because this is a corporation that may or may not have assets behind it, if we just boot them right now, we might be out the money. Um, and, uh, but then again, it sounds like there's also a possibility that we could still be out the money even if they do continue through May because what happens come May if they're like, ha ah, guess what? We don't have that money we told you you're gonna get. Wow, thanks for letting us stay until May. So uh, I think that was part of what's at issue here. What guarantee do we have that if we go this direction to May, that that money's gonna show up? Oh, there is no guarantee, yeah. So, and, and, and we don't know how the judge is gonna rule. Um, and none of us know how the judge is gonna rule. Um, so, I think that you, you fairly stated the three options um, and reasonable minds can differ on what the appropriate approach is. And so, yeah. Oh, you can finish. Well, I was basically done. I mean, reasonable minds can, can differ on it and you can um, do, you, you know, instruct the town manager and me to proceed whichever way you wanna go. I I'm gonna propose there's a fourth option, and, yeah, and I'm sorry to be this wild card, but Rachel <laughs> proposed it. Mm -hmm. She said, I'll pay you tomorrow, and we can move forward. And, but then that raises the question, is that what we wanna be doing with the property? But there is a fourth option. That, that, that is true. It, we're not in a position, the town is not in a position right now though with the um, lease with uh, behavioral health resources to do anything without uh, behavioral health resources consenting to it. And th so it's a business. So that was my, sorry, you gotta settle. But that was my question, is we gave an issue, a notice of termination of the lease on November 19th. So what's the next step after that? Like, 
the, t the lease is terminated. We gave notice. Isn't the lease and then, terminated? Well, then you, well. What's, uh, I'm asking, what's yes. the next step? Because you're saying <coughs> we're in no position to do anything without if, their if consent. The if, if the lease has been reinstated. And it hasn't, it we has haven't it. voted on that. Right now, the last thing we have is a <coughs> November 19th issue of notice of termination of the lease. Yep. But you're, That's you're, where we are right so, now. Okay, so if, if the lease does not get reinstated, then the next step would be um, suing behavioral health resources for forcible entry and detainer, which is exactly what she did to uh, Ms. Walls. I just agree. That next step. I don't understand. Okay, so how, what's what's that process? We we what we what? draft a complaint. We have it served. Um, we there could be a hearing. Um, and, and she, if she opposes it, I don't know if she would oppose it. But but then that that also terminates uh, any uh, rights that Ms. Walls has because her only rights flow from that prime lease. Right, but we so, can enter a new lease. Absolutely. After she's in. So, yeah. So uh, my understanding is you've advised um, the town manager to proceed this way, and this is how you've advised to proceed with um, yes. reinstating the lease. I thought it was the best way for the town to uh, come out of this hole, but certainly, the, I, as everyone has pointed out, there are multiple options. Mm -hmm. But, but in your experience, you, you're our town attorney, you have experience with this, we contract with you to give us advice, and it sounds like that's what your advice is to do. Yes, and I thought, knowing that the town wants to utilize that space for park employees, it was in, important to um, get a, avoid litigation, get paid, and have the space available sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. So those were, the, those were the thoughts that went into this recommendation. Because it's my understanding from doing forcible detainers, it could take us a few months to Absolutely. actually have her evicted and, and gain possession. That's fine. Mr. Lurie, I, I, I would just ask, this is our town attorney and he's assisting us right now. Thank you. Um, did anyone else have questions for Mr. Hill? Matt. May I, Madam Chair? Yes. Um, Mike, would you uh, talk about the the complications that it would take if we received pen payment of rent from a subtenant to the owner of the property becomes at that point a co-tenant versus a subtenant, and it would then create a problem, if you know what I mean. Well, that that could be an argument <laughs> that that, that that course of dealings that now we have. A contractual relationship with Ms. Walls, but um, so th I just have tried to keep the town out of getting involved in the dispute between our our tenant and its subtenant. Um, but here we are, so we are involved. <laughs> yes, Caitlin Jordan. To follow up on that, so you're thinking or trying to say that if we accept the the back payment from Ms. Walls, that she becomes a co-tenant and basically cures behavioral health so that it, it keeps behavioral health as a tenant or or it still terminates behavioral health and she's only paid it. Because that's a key difference to me. Like if you're saying that by her paying it it saves behavioral health, then I'm not really willing to go down that road right now and I don't think she wants to either. But if she can just pay it and then we have to stay in a relationship with her for what's left on the lease till May, you say? So she pays it and, and she gets basically become a co-tenant that we have a contractual relationship with her until May. That gives us until May to figure out what the heck to do because I don't know if I've just been sleeping, but I didn't know anything about kicking tenants out at the fort and moving park rangers in because there goes a whole revenue stream. So I think we need to have a little more talk about that before we move forward in that direction and that's not gonna happen tonight. Right, and I would just say this, it isn't necessarily as simple as accepting a check tomorrow because you would wanna have an agreement as to who, 
what the contractual relationship is. You, you don't want to just accept a check that can then create a, another set of problems. So if you were going to go down that road, you'd want to have it clearly spelled out what the, what the relationship is between the town, behavioral health, and Ms. Walls, and when um, any um, lease is going to terminate. Sorry, okay. You know, the, the May date for So a, a new option is to accept Ms. Wall's offer, enter into a well-drafted by you new contract that extends her sublease to become a co-tenant to a lease to May, which is the current end date. And at the same time, we start the get out eviction process or whatever you said, take by force. Forcible entry. Forcible and entry and by to behavioral health and she be gone. I'm just, these are, there's a little more than what was offered as options. I kind of like that last one. <laughs> Chair? Yes, Councilor Shaw. I think uh, Caitlin uh, hit the nail on the head where for me at least, whether or not to go with the advised uh, route is in many ways turns on that decision of do we want to give up the revenue um, and move the town staff into the into the spot or not? Um, and, and as you know, that's a topic we haven't yet debated and discussed. And, but, and if we do, then it would be, eh, go this way. But if we're like, we really want that money, we really want to keep renting this, then maybe we'll look at this. So either way, we have a lease until May. And because we need, we need to discuss that. And this way, it kind of makes everybody in this room whole at the moment. It allows Ms. Walls to continue what she believes she entered into at least until May. It allows us to get our money back. It allows us to start getting behavioral health out. They get to continue their fight in court all by themselves. And we can have some time to make a decision on what we're gonna do. Uh, Councilor Garvin. Um, in the scenario that Councilor Jordan just laid out, though, I, I wouldn't presume, and I, I think you already touched on this a little bit, the expected response from behavioral health with whom we currently have the agreement or have, have served notice of termination to, um, I would expect there to be, unless she just said, okay, I'm out, that the likely outcome would be pushback on that and potential extended litigation for the town and cost to the town for that, at which point we wouldn't immediately be inserting either Ms. Walls or any other new tenant of our choice until that had played out, is that correct? Yes, and I, I, I have no idea what their reaction might be, what behavioral health resources reaction may be. They may say, I've had enough, we want to out, and they would sign off. But it, we, would, we would want to have all three parties agree that uh, going forward what, what the relationship is going to be. And it wouldn't, I wouldn't want to just um, go forward with that, the lease that we have. Now, if, if there is a three-party agreement, um, we, would, we would want additional terms. Um, Caitlin and then Jamie. Can we maybe arrange a mediation <laughs> between the three parties? Jamie? I move that we leave the um, eviction action, uh, ter the termination uh, and, and associated eviction action that was already served to Ms. Jordan, uh, that we leave that and pursue that to its natural, natural end. Um, is there a second? And do nothing else. Uh, I'll second it. Just uh, so I second. Uh, can Can you clarify what ex um, clarify exactly what I just seconded? So you're saying so proceed with the eviction yep. action, Madam Chair. Yes. So um, it, and then was that a second? Uh, it was a second, so I could ask you so that question. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with the idea that we need to have a further and more in-depth discussion about how to best use and utilize the property. Um, I 
this council has charged the Fort Williams Park Committee with updating the Fort Williams Park Master Plan, of which I would hope that all um, space and revenue generating opportunities would be part of a uh, uh, recommendation that comes back as part of that plan. Um, it, we, we inherited a bad deal on this. Uh, I think there's no question about that. And for some historical context, um, when these leases and many of them, including these clauses, were initially drawn up, we were having a terribly hard time renting space at the fort. And so those buildings and those offices were largely vacant. And um, you know we were incurring costs to maintain them and not, you know, not getting any revenue back for that. Um, when I first found out that um, behavioral health uh, was engaging in profiteering off of our asset, uh, I probably, like most of you, was completely astonished. Um, and I think that there's probably no citizen in this town that thinks that that is something that we should allow to happen. Um, Unfortunately, again, I say that we inherited a bad deal because that was not prohibited in this particular lease. As the town manager has told us, uh, going forward, as these leases sunset, we're either getting out of the leases altogether or inserting those clauses so that this type of activity can't take place going forward. So we can't put the toothpaste back in the tube on, as far as that's concerned, um, but I'm glad that we're taking the appropriate action to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Um, it seems to me that we have a tenant, behavioral health, who, um, you know, whether with this current sub lessor or other previous sub lessors, has, um, you know, had a number of acrimonious relationships. None of that, unfortunately, I don't think really is of concern to us because none of that has risen to terms to, uh, to clauses or terms to uh, terminate the lease based on those causes. So again, we still have a valid lease with, or up until this point, have had a valid lease with behavioral health and we've had to live by those terms uh, or risk exposing ourselves to, to litigation for terminating without cause. Uh, we do now have uh, the fact that the, the tenant has not paid the rent and that is justification for terminating the lease. I think we should move forward with that. Uh, see that to its natural conclusion, whether or not she accepts that and moves on. And then we open up the property and have further discussion for whether or not this sub lessor or any other uh, potential tenant um, would be you know, appropriate to put in that space, that we then have that conversation at that time. I, I don't think that there's any other decision for us to make you know, with all these other variables because this is the clearest um, and, and, and most direct line of the relationship that we have to the property, to the tenant, uh, behavioral health, and all of the rest of it. And I'm, I'm extremely sympathetic to the situation you're in. And I'm, you know, I compliment the people that have come forward here tonight to speak on behalf of you and your character and your work. And it's very consistent with things that we, you know, very much enjoy and, 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 and like having in this town. None of that really, that's all secondary and ancillary to the fact that our lease is with behavioral health and what happens um, beyond that is largely um, not within our purview. Um, you know, save for, you know, whether or not inappropriate, you know, action or, or, or things are happening with that. So, um, so anyway, that's, that's my rationale on let's continue with the termination as was notified, uh, which well, I don't have the date right in front of me. Um, and what comes of that, we'll see what happens and then we'll take this one step at a time. And if we recover um, the asset through that uh, and, the, and the rent that's due to us, so be it. If not, you know, by my calculation, we're currently out $12,000 of rent, right? Um, I think the council has to weigh whether or not the the cost benefit of pursuing that or or incurring further legal costs to to try and fight for that is of value to the town and the citizens. But um, to me, the most logical thing is to terminate, uh, continue with the termination as was as the action that was taken. Thank you, uh, Councilor Devereaux. Uh, I, I agree with what um, Councillor Garvin's saying. However, I'd, I'd just like to ask um, Attorney Hill, it, when you talked about reinstating and uh, there's an agreement that she'll leave in May, 
Is that an agreement that you've put together to where she's agreed to move out by May 31st? Um, is is it, there an agreement to move there's, out? There's nothing in writing at this point. There were some uh, negotiations on how the rent could be paid and terminating um, the right to extend, the option to extend the lease for another two years. So, um, that, and that's what we're here for tonight is to, to whether you would ratify that. And it sounds like there's uh, a number of people that are not in favor of ratifying that. And that's fine too. We'll just proceed with the uh, termination and tell behavioral health resources that if that if that's the decision of the council, that's but my my understanding. Of what you're saying is she's agreeing that it'll be terminated in May, and there will not be a lease renewal. Correct. Correct. So she will be out by May for sure. Did you talk Again. to Connie? Pardon me. Did you talk to Connie at all about this? Yeah. The the idea is that. Because that's your question. The, the non-renewal will happen, so she will quit her interest at that at that point. She, Miss Walls, is the one in ha inhabiting the space. I think Miss Jordan has uh, some materials in the basement that she stores there. But otherwise, for all for all intents and purposes, she her interest will be vacated as of the end of May. So my point is, we don't have to go forward with the eviction with the forcible detainer because she's going to sign a stipulation agreement to be out by May, if we go forward with the forcible detainer, um, it sounds like it's not only will cost attorney fees, but it, it sounds like Ms. Wells has been um, involved in litigation for months and months and months um, as a, two and a half years. Uh, do we wanna get involved with something that could take us two and a half years to evict her if she's going to agree to move out by May 31st and make some sort of, um, restitution or pay some of the back rent. That seems to me like the way to go because it's guaranteed she's gonna be out and she's gonna make payments to us. Yeah, I, um, I don't know that, that she'll be able to make payments if what um, Ms. Wall said, if, which again, we're not involved in that right. litigation, so I am not privy to it, but um, if the money does not go, if the money goes back to Ms. Walls, then we would not get funds from Behavioral Health Resources. Ms. Walls has offered to, to cure that, but I, I'm sure that she would want um, a lease with some term, not just uh, May of, 20, of this year. But So it, you really need to decide what you want to do with this property. It, 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 it comes back to that. Oh, uh, Councilor Caitlin Jordan. Well, we don't need to decide that tonight. No. And so what I don't understand is why, I mean, Jamie made the motion to continue with the termination. M my idea was to continue with the termination, get whole, let Rachel, Miss Walls, stay in the space until May. Whether we reinstate and the behavioral health gets to stay until May, we don't have the space until May, right? So this way, we continue with the eviction, whether you go with Jamie's idea or mine, and it's gonna be the same battle, either she fights it or she doesn't, same litigation, same costs for that. Or, But here we got, an agreement over here between the town and Miss Walls that makes us whole and we continue to get rent through May. So I'm just trying to see what's, I need somebody to help me with the downside to my plan. My understand, we can't do that because we, because behavioral is the tenant. And so we can't make a side deal with another tenant while we already have a tenant in there. But we can because when she pays, he's saying that she becomes a co-tenant. We don't want a co-tenant. Yeah, we, not recommending that's that. what, we but do not want a co-tenant. That's what I'm saying is we, we would lose one. That's why I asked the question. We lose one, we gain one till May. So like, I, I guess I'm I, missing chairman, it. Chairwoman. 
Yes. Uh, so uh, I think the question is, to phrase it this way, um, what sticks do we still have left in the bundle that we can hand off to this person, or have we already given all of our sticks in the bundle uh, to the one tenant so there are no sticks left to give to this person? When do we get our sticks back so we can give them to that person? Hmm. Well, um, I'm not sure that I'm um, understanding your oh, an okay. analogy. All right, fair that. enough. I, I get it, though. I'm with you. Okay, yeah. I, I think he's going back to 1L property. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bundle of uh, rights. It, 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 so right. But, so we, we, we can't offer her space until the whole eviction process that Jamie's said is complete. Correct. We, we can't. Sticks. We're with you. We can't what? So he's saying that that behavioral health has a hold to everything until the forcible entry is complete. Correct. Then we get our sticks back and then could offer them to Rachel. But right now, we can't offer her sticks because we haven't gotten them back from behavioral health. My question is, by serving the termination notice, is that getting our sticks back and we're just waiting for her to move her campsite? <laughs> Um, if she if she fights it, it, it could be prolonged. If she doesn't fight it, it, that that termination would be the end of that relationship. If she consents to that, I I don't know what, what? her reaction would be. Um, I I think at this point, um, um, given the sentiment that's been expressed. I don't know that I would, uh, you know, we, we can go forward with a, the termination and not have um, a, re uh, a, 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 you know, the, try that reinstatement. Um, what will happen, I think, is that um, that would set Ms. Walls up to um, win her case because then, um, Behavioral health resources would no longer have uh, any interest, um, and then if the money goes back to Ms. Walls, we would have to negotiate with her as to how we how we proceed. But I actually I have a question. So, could we sit down, as Caitlin suggested, not necessarily a mediation, but a discussion between yes. the parties and see if Connie Jordan will agree to terminate? Ms. Walls will agree to take over until May at least, and then in the meantime, the rest of us can discuss what we'd like to do generally. Yes. And that would maybe solve these issues? I, this is... The other thing, too, is um, I don't know that we've asked Ms. Jordan. She's agreed to May, but she may even agree to February. Did we ask her, Mr. Sturgis, in your communications with her to be open to stopping the term earlier than uh, the normal end of the visit that they met? Yeah, we haven't discussed that. We haven't discussed that. Right, I think that's, that's my suggestion is that we look at terminating her as, you know, as soon as she'll agree to it. So let's just play that out and figure out what the action that we would need from this group tonight is. If, if our goal is to end the town's lease with Miss Jordan and set up some sort of a temporary lease or rental agreement that at least gets us through the end of the previously agreed upon lease, lease term with Miss Wall, what we would need to do tonight is make sure that the town manager has the authority to act on the town's behalf in that negotiation. What, what, what's the action that's needed for this body? I think we would authorize, I believe that we would authorize the manager to engage in those discussions. Mm -hmm. For ratification by this body in a subsequent meeting? Right. Councilor Garb. Um, Matt or Mike, could you remind the council what your powers as manager are relative to entering into lease agreements, terminating lease agreements, and whether or not the, those actions require approval of the council? 
Well, there's been some discussion lately, <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Garvin. Uh, looking at previous actions, I felt that the manager and looking at the charter had the ability to, you know, specifically when we renewed the lease, that I had the ability to do that, as well as uh, as well as do the termination of the agreement, as so well as trying to get through this. Uh, the relevant language that I see, if I may, in the charter is in Article Three. Um, Section 1, subsection 6, which authorizes you as the purchasing agent for all departments of the town, except for the Department of Education. And as I, I think the interpretation of purchasing agent has traditionally been viewed pretty broadly um, for whether you're acquiring something or acting on behalf of the town in terms of broker as a broker for a town asset. Is that correct? In a sense, versus disposal or acceptance, that's purely within the, right. the council's purview. Right. Um, so as far as the required action that, that's, uh, that's needed here, I, I, I'm not 100% certain, and I know that the reason that this was brought forward was to sort of dot I's and cross T's just in case, but I'm not entirely certain that authorization is even needed uh, in this particular instance. Um, and I think that all of what's being discussed makes sense to do in a sequential manner that starts with continuing with the termination of the existing lease. What comes of that will be what comes of that, and then the, the various ramifications, and, and I, I, I suspect that you're correct that that will play favorably for Ms. Walls in her litigation, um, and so I, I would think that that would be a benefit in that, in that particular case. And then we take it one step at a time and determine, okay, well, now that, now that we have the space avail back available to us because there's no longer a current tenant, what, what do we want to do with it? Yeah. Uh, to me, that make, I, I, think we're, I think we're twisting too many variables around the problem here. And the core, the core issue as I see it is that we have a tenant, Behavioral Health, who's in default on payment of rent. We've issued a notice of termination, and that's the path that we need to continue to proceed down. And I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. All of the rest of it is is ancillary. Mm -hmm. uh, Caitlin Jordan. I agree. <laughs> you, you're right. No, like let's step one, and then Matt's got the direction from the council is what we're talking about, and he has the authority to move in that direction and get us till May. So it's all that Jamie's right. That's all we need to do tonight and is give Matt direction as to what we want, and I think we've done that. Um, I, Mr. Hill, did you and I would just say, I, I don't have my copy of the charter with me, but I believe that um, conveyance of an interest in real estate needs to go to the council, and so a lease is an interest in real estate. So that's, that's the thought on that. But I couldn't say each chapter and verse. Um, did someone over here have a comment? I thought I saw a hand. Well, I, I was, my comment was just that um, similar to Caitlin, it sounds like um, really there's not a motion, there's mm -hmm. nothing for us to do but have this discussion and then it's for Matt and our attorney, is my understanding, to um, follow through with um, the foreclosure process, or the termination of the lease. Um, yeah, I was going to say, there is a motion on the table. It was my motion to to continue with the termination, and I, I'd like to call the question. Um, I just had one last comment on that issue, um, that we are already engaged in that process, and when you're engaged in a legal process, there is an opportunity to settle. And so I don't think this is exclusive from um, continuing to pursue the forcible entry detainer that we could also at the same time attempt to negotiate that resolution rather than go through all the court proceedings and right. waste legal resources. Yeah. Um, so if there's no other comments or questions on this issue, we will call the question. It's Jamie's motion. Um, Deb, did you? Jot that down. I did, as I understand it, is to pursue the already served termination with behavioral health resources. Yes. Okay. Um, all in favor? It's unanimous. Madam Chairman, if I may. 
Yes. I would, I'd like to thank the council uh, for, feel, <laughs> quite frankly, feeling my pain. <laughs> but, <laughs> But, in, uh, but I appreciate your, your thoughtfulness that you had regarding this issue and uh, uh, taking the comments that you had. Uh, and Mike and I are, will be good to move forward, so thank you for that. Thank you. And uh, thank you everyone for your comments this evening. Okay, so moving on to the next item on the agenda, that's item number 28-2020, the town manager's contract. We now have an opportunity for public comment on the town manager's contract, if there is any. Okay. Um, seeing none. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. <coughs> Rosemary Reed, former town councilor, currently non-resident. The only suggestion I would have of the town manager, as busy as you are, sir, is to not take any action of a prior town manager without understanding the implications. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other comment on the town manager's contract? Seeing none. Okay. Um, May I introduce this? Yes. Um, so as we discussed in our meetings in executive session, uh, November 6th and November 13th, um, the town manager's previous contract um, was expiring or was due to expire January 29th, 2020. Um, so um, having uh, conducted uh, three years of uh, multiple positive performance reviews and all of us being quite pleased with Matt's employment uh, here at the town um, and looking to continue that, um, we all worked in discussion to uh, come up with updated terms uh, to the contract. Um, so in the packet was the red line version of that contract. Um, so in addition to the um, the salary and retirement contribution number that we all had discussed. I did go through and just make a bunch of other um, sort of administrative updates. Um, there was some language in there that had to do with um, probationary period and, and things of that sort, as well as things relative to uh, termination after termination after um, a certain period of employment. So um, I hope everybody's had a chance to just look at that and make sure that um, everything looks appropriate. And Matt, I hope you have too. Um, and so I just wanted to also, um, for the public record and, and for the benefit of, of um, uh, 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 um, those watching, um, you know, when we when we brought Matt on board, um, we were very happy to promote and elevate a longstanding town employee um, that had had ser served successfully in his previous role and was looking for opportunity for advancement. Um, but we did so with full knowledge that he didn't yet have any previous experience in a specific role as town manager. And so the town uh, council undertook a pretty um, good look uh, at this point after three successful years of um, Matt's performance and Matt's job um, to date, um, you know, what others in the, in the field and in the profession um, in our peer communities were making. And so that's how we arrived at the, at the number that you see here today. So I just wanted folks to understand um, um, what was behind that thinking and that there wasn't anything arbitrary about it. Um, so with that, I move that we um, authorize, or that we approve rather the um, uh, uh, updated contract with the town manager to run for another three years at the terms that are outlined in the contract um, and uh, look forward to continued successful work in relationship with Matt. Is there a second? Councilor Jordan, Penelope Jordan. Um, all in favor? I'd like to. Oh, I'm sorry. Any discussion? Comment really quick. Um, along the lines of what Councillor Garvin said, I just want to um, point out that the council met uh, met a few times. We talked about it. We looked at 
other communities, some that were very similar to Cape Elizabeth, some that were different. We looked at um, amount of time that town managers had been in their position, how much experience they brought, um, how big the budgets were. We looked at so many different um, variables. So this wasn't something that we just pulled a number um, out of the air. We really looked at a lot of different variables. And then um, the number is uh, from 110 to 125. It's a big jump. One, 112. I'm, five. I'm sorry, 112. Yep. Sorry for that. But Matt was brought on. My understanding was it was a fairly low number at the time that wasn't comparable to what was being paid to other town managers because he hadn't been a town manager, even though he had served um, Cape Elizabeth for 17 years, and um, he has experience in town management, in town government, um, in gray. So um, we looked at that also and felt that with um, the job that he's done and how well he's just moved right into this position, that it really warranted um, a jump to um, the new figure. And um, thank you so much, Matt, for everything you've done. We really appreciate you. Okay. Any other discussion on this item? No. Um, all in favor? It's unanimous. Madam thank you, Chair, Matt. If, yes. if, I, if I may know, the vote's been taken. <laughs> 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 I, I just want to say thank you so much for, for the, the prior three years. I'm looking forward to the next three years. Uh, it's. It does not pass me a day by that I, I have a great council to work with and I couldn't do much of what I do, any of what I do without a great council and without great staff who we have here working for us. So uh, we've got a fantastic team and uh, it helps us accomplish a lot of great things. Some things that people thought never were gonna happen and you have the scar tissue to prove that from last year, uh, but some really great things are happening and, and look forward to keep on accomplishing. So thank you for that. and. Uh, I really enjoy being for this town, so going on my 20th year, uh, looking forward to uh, a long tenure, so thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> we enjoy having you here. Um, all right, item number 29-2020, Conservation Committee Report. Um, is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, um, I'll just cue this up. For over a decade, the Boy Scouts, supported by troop leader A.J. Danino, have created Eagle Scout candidate projects by coordinating <laughs> Greenbelt Trail improvements with the Conservation Committee. In 2019, three candidates completed projects. The Conservation Committee felt it appropriate to recognize these efforts in a report to the Town Council. Um, we did have that report in our packet this evening. Um, doesn't look like there's anyone to present on it. Um, so, do we have a motion to accept? Well, let me just, I'll queue up the motion. Um, is there a motion to acknowledge receipt of the report from the Conservation Committee dated January 8th, 2020, regarding the Eagle Scout project on the Greenbelt? With <coughs> thanks and appreciation to all of the Eagle Scout candidates who have volunteered on the town's Greenbelt Trail. Councillor Gableson. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? second. Councillor Devereaux. Um, any discussion? Um, I'd just like to say, when in my time on the Conservation Committee, I had the pleasure of working with AJ and a handful of these Eagle Scouts on these projects. Um, and uh, his dedication in helping these young men shape these projects, deliver these projects, has really been phenomenal, as well as the work that they've put into them. Uh, it's a great asset to the town and helps the Conservation Committee get a lot more work done, really stretch that town dollar as far as they possibly can, which is a great great thing for the budget as well. Um, and I'd also just like to make sure that we're acknowledging um, the members of the Conservation Committee as well who, who also put in a fair amount of work uh, helping the Eagle Scouts think through these projects and design something that's gonna last and serve the interests of the town. So thank you to all of them. Yes. Any other comments? Councillor Penny Jordan? Um, as I was reading this, I was trying to think of a way that we could make this more visible because I think this is an amazing project. And, um, and 
I don't know if that's something, um, I know the Conservation Commission did this report, but is there a way, maybe with our new website, we can get a little more um, uh, visible with things like this, because it'd be great to have the kids' pictures and them talk a bit about their experience, and because this is fabulous stuff, fabulous. So I don't know if that's something we can think about for the future. Yeah, maybe on the under the um, parks and recreation section or something would be nice. I, I do know the the new website that we're looking at. It's very dynamic. I mean, the one of the, you know they can add video. I mean, it's you know we have a very functional, very great website, and right. uh, it, you know speaking with one day a webmaster, she it's knows it's time, well. it's time for a change, and she's served yeah. us extremely well uh, for so many so many years, but. There's some really cool stuff that, <laughs> that the new websites do too, as far as in, in, you know, taking in drone footage, or and you could fly over the Pollock Brook Bridge and take a look at that, and you could have some really cool elements linked in there very, yep. very easily. So uh, we'll definitely be happy to explore any and all That'd options so to cool. add better. Yeah. This is so many things that kids in this town are doing, young people in this town are doing, as well as uh, not so young people. And it'd be great <laughs> to just uh, have some sort of uh, in the news kind of thing. And these are all great projects, but I have to say, Peter's project in particular, adding that third board on the boardwalk has probably kept me out of the emergency room at least a half dozen times. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yes, as a, as a frequenter of the trails myself, I'm very appreciative of these projects also. Um, any other discussion? Okay, all in favor of the motion? It is unanimous. All right, um, I'm assuming based on the audience that there are no citizens wishing to raise a topic that's not on the agenda this evening. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Councilor Gabrielson, a second. Councilor Penny Jordan, all in favor? We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>